Oh, so hey, what's up? What's up? Alfroity, another video. This is an RX8 video now. So, this is something simple that anybody can do. Um, you know, it's pretty easy. I'm just gonna do an oil change. You know, everybody knows how to do oil change, right? And if you don't, you know, just watch the video and you'll learn. It's pretty much the same thing for any vehicle. All right. <coughs> Ooh. Ah. Anyways, so right now we're in the RX-8 and I'm about to do an oil change because I like to do my oil changes every 3,000 miles. And it's a little overkill. Man, this thing's super close. It's a little overkill, but that's how I like to do it. I just like to keep on top of maintenance, which I'm a little over 3,000. But that's just because I drove it, you know, and I'm not going to sit there and just stop in the middle of the road and like, okay, it's at 3,000 and you tow this joker right back home. No, so, yep, we're about to start her up and I'm going to roll it up on ramps, which is going to be very interesting. And this, this car is lowered, so we'll let's see how that works. So, anyways, that's what we're doing, so I'm going to take you guys with me there. All right? Yeah! Show you guys a little... Start up of the beast. See, I was 38 miles over 3,000. No biggie. Oop. All right, let's try that again. <laughs> Cut. All right, redo. Yeah, it does that sometimes. That's that's all right. It's normal. That's normal. Anyways. So I'm gonna let this warm up just a little bit. You know, it's it's already kind of warm, so I just drove it. But then I'm pull it up on the ramps, so we get that choker rolling. So like essentially, that is going on that. So yeah, all right, yeah, we'll see. So like essentially. That ain't gonna work. <laughs> you know, that is not gonna work, man. Oh, it's so aggravating. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to do this the really bad way that I don't really recommend. So, as you watch me do this, don't do this, okay? And yeah, all right, let's do this. Stupid. All right, so I'm gonna show you the tools you're gonna need. Pretty basic stuff if you've ever done an oil change. Um, you know, this is just a little basic stuff that you can pick up at Walmart. This is where I went. Uh, me personally, but uh, you can go to AutoZone, Advance, any parts store, any parts store you can get it from. But, um, yeah, so I'm just going to show you the tools that you're going to need, and, uh, yeah, just to complete the project. That's it. All right. So I'm going to turn around and show you guys. All right. So this is all you're going to pretty much need. Of course, you're going to have the oil and the, uh, the, the correct oil filter. Um, yeah, it's super tech. You know, bite me, whatever. It was cheap, and I needed this, and I don't have that much money. Anyways. Uh, you're going to need an oil pan so you can uh, put all the old oil inside of it and recycle that properly, of course. You're going to need some oil filter pliers or, you know, you have different kinds to take off the oil filter and everything. Like, they have these, uh, like, these cups for it that are like sockets. And I prefer using those, but this was only like four bucks, so I picked it up. Uh, you're going to need a, like a rag, just like an old rag. I use this when you're using these just so you don't damage the oil filter and stuff. So just wrap it around it, then tighten it with that. <clears throat> and um, then you're gonna need a 19 millimeter socket with a 3H drive or whichever drive you like. Uh, you can use an extension. Uh, I prefer extension, you know, you really don't have to use an extension, but you know, that's, that's just all up to you. And that's pretty much all you need right there. All right, so the first step of doing the uh, oil change, of course, you're gonna you know, park your car and everything, and then uh, you gotta pop the hood. So I'm gonna show you where like the lever is. All right, so you just pop the hood right here. Okay. And then, it's gonna be a hood latch right there. Push that to the right, lift her up. Okay, then you're gonna pop your hood, and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so this is pretty much a good time to go ahead and check over everything, like all your fluids, your important fluids, and stuff like that. Make sure nothing's been tampered with, of course, or anything has come loose or anything like that. So you can just inspect your coolant, and I don't know if you can see that, but the level is good. It's on full. Check your washer fluid. 
washer fluid is okay. There's a washer fluid in there. And your brake fluid. Yeah, that seems good. All right. And of course, just find your locations. So the location of the oil filter, you see it right back there. And your oil caps right there. And just etc. and so on. Um, the first step to the actual oil change uh, is going to be actually removing your oil cap. Okay, you're just going to take a little twist. And I don't know why that was so tight. And then of course just take it right on off. And uh, make sure you read your cap, excuse me. Uh, make sure you read your cap to make sure you have the right oil for your car. Uh, like 90% of the time it's going to be on the cap. I know there's some instances where it's not, but yeah. So a rule of thumb, what I like to do is I like to leave it right here in the hood latch. So that way I know I'm not going to forget to put it on. And, you know, if I go to close my hood, it's going to catch on there and it's going to automatically remind you. So that's what I like to do. And then we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, well, those ramps actually did come in handy. I figured out I can use those as jack stands. So, you know, whatever is strong and sturdy available, I guess. You know, that's what I'm doing. Not recommending it to anybody else because I don't know how sturdy those things are. But that's what I'm doing, so that's on me. But, like I said, jack up your car. Uh, I'll show you those slip points again just in case you missed it. Also, I forgot to mention on why we actually took the cap off. So the reason we take the cap off is so that way it doesn't have like a vacuum seal, like a vacuum lock. Uh, it actually allows that air to go inside and then let the uh, oil flow out faster. So you can get the oil change done faster. So yeah, I forgot to I forgot to mention that. But yeah, that's why we take it off. You know, it's, it's just a good idea, and then to always have that kind of safety feature as well. So that's a good uh, word of the wise there. So yep. Now we're gonna go into the car. So forgot to mention that. All right. So after you're under here, you gotta locate your oil pan, which is this right here, and then you gotta locate the uh, bolt that's holding the oil inside right there. And that's it right here, and this is where the 19 millimeter socket and your ratchet comes in, and as well as your catch can right there. So after that flows out, always compensate for the flow. So I always push mine just a little to the right because it's gonna shoot out the. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Okay, sorry. It's gonna shoot out the oil out that way because it's all right here. So. Yep, after you're done in the car, you see your bolt right here, you can get on it, alrighty, and remember to pull it towards you, don't push it away from you, whenever you're loosening a bolt, it's better to pull towards you, um, I think if I forget to turn, there we go. Uh, it's always best to do that, I know sometimes like if you pull and hit yourself in the face, and you know, trust me, that's happened to me, but uh, yeah, it's just, just a word of the wise, alright, so you pretty much just take it, Okay, and you gotta be careful because this oil isn't really under pressure, but there's just a lot down there, you know. And uh, so you get kind of loose, and to the point where you can pretty much turn it with your hand. So I can turn it with my hand. Yep. So I can turn it with my hand now. And then this is where this comes in super handy, and. Take it loose right there. If you can see the okay, yeah, perfect. So you take it loose, and then I'm gonna try super hard not to get anything on the floor, which I fail that. <laughs> Just a little bit of drops, little drops. Uh, okay, so there goes your bolt right here. It's kind of messy. Um, this is where that rag would actually come in handy right here and then you just lay it on top of there and let that oil like oil drain out it's gonna take about like probably like two to five minutes tops and then it gives you time to actually go wash your hands real quick so this one I'm gonna do so that way I can get that back in there all right yeah another tip see why you're letting that drain because that's gonna take a little bit since you're under the car um just take a look at all your your uh, suspension components and uh 
like any kind of leaks that you might have this is a good idea so that way you're actually under your car now and you can take a look at what's going on underneath it so um you know i, I have no leaks right now i have a sludge build up that's, that's no big deal could be a big deal but not to me anyways but yeah like looking at your suspension components and stuff like that so just a little weird of the wise you know while you're under the car just look and see what you have going on so that's always a good idea because that's still draining and it's been like been like probably like four minutes since i stopped the video but yep so the word of wise keep it real but this is the point where you can actually go ahead and just put your uh, drain plug back in you know after you clean it up and uh if you have a gasket on there which there's a gasket on this one um it is always best to replace those with a brand new one so that way you have no oil leaks um, unfortunately, I don't have a new one, but, you know, it's, it's okay if you don't, like, every time, but it's best to do that, so that way you don't have any oil leaks coming from your oil pan. And as you can see, look, it even, it just started dripping now, so it's actually the best time to do it. So, just go ahead and screw that back in, hand tight, for right now. Screw that back on in there, and then go ahead and use that rag to clean all the excess oil off so it's not all dirty just a good little word of wise thing okay alrighty and then you can actually go ahead and tighten it on up now with your 19 millimeter socket so ooh, that oil is actually look at me going against my own word I'm pushing so, Alright, we use a little oil pan. Okay. And yeah, I'm gonna go against my own word for a little bit just to get it tightened. Because you don't really need it too tight. Some do have a torque specification, so if they do, um you can look that up and then torque it down. I just like to tight it like tighten it as not as tight as I can, but just tight enough, pretty much. I go by German measurements, I go by good and tight. So Yep. So that's good. And then just wipe off the excess oil again if there was any and that is it if well that's all you need to do that's under your car depending on the vehicle some vehicles do have the oil filter under the car still so you would have to take out your oil filter but in my case the oil filter is up there so i'm gonna take you guys with me up there all right so then you pull your uh your oil pan from under the car which is where your oil drain and you can see how full that is so um what I recommend doing is whenever you do an oil change to keep these, the uh, the uh, jug that your oil actually comes in. So that way once you're done with it, you can pour that old oil into this and then discard it properly at your local uh, like dump. They have places where you can put your oil. So I think it's just the best way to keep it mobile. So that way you can um, take it over there and it doesn't stay in this by your yard and then it gets in rain. And it's just a bad deal. So... Like I said, just keep these so that way you can pour the old, old oil into it and then let it roll from there. So that's what I'm going to do now. Alright, so you're going to find your oil filter. It's on the RX-8. It's right there. Um, what I found easiest to do instead of trying to like struggle to get your arms through there or anything like that. You know, if you can do it, then you know, good on you. But I can't. So I like to take this out, which this is a 10 millimeter socket. Uh, I forgot to put that tool... Uh, out there but that is a 10 millimeter socket and you just take that out and then this little bracket comes out and then you kind of move it out of your way so I'm gonna take that out now all right so after you break that loose with the uh, 10 millimeter I use a deep well so after you break that loose which is you generally not gonna be really tight so you just kind of run that off with your hands and then you place this to a point where you won't lose it so just place it like right up there so just right there and then you can move this around and kind of get your hand down to there if you can see it. So, so that's what I'm going to do now. Alright, so if you can't get it off with your hands, um, you can use this tool. This is what I showed you before. Um, when taking off the oil filter, I wouldn't really worry about it. About actually like, um, like not damaging it because you're going to... Throw it away properly, of course, because oil filters you have to throw away properly. Uh, you get throw away anyway, so you really don't need it again. So, all right. So after you remove it, I don't know if you can see, that's pretty much what it looks like. And this is the filter. And let me tell you, 
absolute pain. Holy cow, bad pain. Okay, and another thing I'm gonna tell you guys is, hold on, I'm gonna find it first. I'm gonna find it, then I'm gonna tell you guys. All right, these oil filter pliers by HyperTuff, you know, the ones you get at Walmart, honestly, truly and completely honestly, freaking screw them. All right, screw them, they suck. Brand new, I bought them yesterday. I clamped onto the thingy like freaking four times and all they kept doing was just slipping and going to the other slot. Slipping and going to the other slot, they suck. Anyways, uh, I ended up having to use these, which actually was really helpful because you can grip the, the oil filter and turn it by hand. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so I used these. And another thing, uh, make sure you put that oil drain back under there because it will leak uh, some of the oil from the oil filter. Alright, so first of course, kind of compare them, like the uh, the diameter of the, the hole there. Kind of compare those two just to make sure you got the right one. And make sure you take the old oil, right here, you can take it from around here, or you can even dip your finger into the bucket, and lubricate this seal. So make sure it's nice and lubricated before you put it in. And then, I'm going to show you another thing that you do with the oil filter, a little word of the wise kind of thing. So, hold on. All right, so then you kind of just thread on your new one. And you can see it down there. Kind of just thread it on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use those gloves to tighten it back up. So, because you have the extra. All right, so filter is done, nice and clean. Now we move on to actually putting the oil inside the car. So this car takes uh, four quarts of oil. Uh, as many people who... Um, I've done their research about RX-8s, they actually burn a lot of oil. So you gotta make sure you keep an eye on your oil levels by checking your dipstick, which is right there. So, Alright, uh, sorry if the wind is actually like loud, I don't know if it is or not, because it's kind of windy. But, um, whenever you pour the oil, I recommend a filter. Of course, not f <laughs> Duh, filter. No, I recommend a funnel, excuse me. Uh, so that way you don't get the oil everywhere and all over the motor and stuff like that. Um, I don't have a legitimate full, uh, fil freaking talk. I don't have a legitimate funnel. that right back in there just like so all right so time down doesn't have to be like OD tight torque down it's not a head bolt so that's pretty much it so bling okay uh, a specific thing that I honestly completely forgot um, when you're doing this on an RX-8 they have these vacuum hoses right here, or these vacuum lines. Always disconnect this one, because that is right there at the filler neck right there. Always disconnect that one and kind of block off this right here. I didn't do it, which is, like, it's not, like, too much of a big deal, but at the same time, like, that's going straight into your throttle body. So, I was lucky enough that it actually didn't do it this time, but... Alright, so make sure you put back what you've taken off. And go to your dipstick and take it out right there. Uh, you can see mine kind of has all that milkiness on it. Don't worry, don't be alarmed. That's not cooling or anything. It's kind of normal in a red re engine. But uh, you check your levels with this, and I'll show you what it's supposed to look like here in a minute. I can't do it with the camera in my hand, but I'm gonna clean it off and then put it back in and then show you the new hole. That's pretty much where you want it to be, actually. Yeah, so this takes about four quarts, and that's what you're gonna put in there. Um, and after that, after cleaning it off and putting it back in, uh, let the car run for about two minutes or so and check the oil again because it will be a little lower 
since it's you know going through the crankcase and everything so all right and if you took that hose out when you did this make sure you put it back in before starting the vehicle um it could cause us some problems like it causes a long start and it just idles really funny i've done it before so i recommend definitely plugging that back in before you start the car uh just a little word of the wise all right make sure you don't leave any tools underneath the vehicle uh double check always and now you just start your car and hope and pray it doesn't blow up all right everything's good so far Keep an eye on your uh, oil pressure. That glare is ridiculous. All right, oil pressure is good. This is a little cold start. That's why it has that uh, high idle right now, of course. Anybody who knows the RX-8 would know that. So it's going down. Now this is the point where you actually get out. And make sure you check around and uh, look for any leaks. So, look at the filler cap, make sure nothing's leaking, of course. Out that hose. Uh, take a look at your oil filter. Right there, make sure it's not leaking from there. Everything looks good. Check under the vehicle. All right, see the focus. Make sure nothing is leaking from there, so your drain plug is good. And everything looks to be in working order. So, that is how you do an oil change, guys. All right, well, if you guys stayed this long, I appreciate you. And, uh, yeah, this is pretty simple. Mazda RX-8 oil change. And, uh, yeah, nothing to it. So, anybody can do it, like I said. And stay tuned for some more dope videos and maintenance videos, all right? Now, keep it real.